I am your host, Damian Duncan, alongside my beautiful sidekick. I'm, I'm just oh, playing. I'm my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. All right, finish it up. I said. Okay, fine. Let, let's, let's, let's start over. No, let's, we're not going to start over. This is who over. we are. This is it. Okay. So we're here and we're excited. You didn't introduce yourself. You did. I'm the sidekick, remember? Welcome to the Damien and Tamisha Show. Each week, power couple Damien and Tamisha are taking you behind the scenes with successful influencers to share their secrets on creating a successful brand and tackling your biggest business and relationship struggles. Their mission, to help you see whatever you want is possible. Build the business and life of your dreams today. You're not the side. Okay, My sorry. partner in crime my everything oh, tamisha my duncan is in Juice the building you know she you know everybody's probably wondering why is she always why is she the one always introducing the show well i'm taking over now okay, this is the full takeover see that wasn't hard to do yeah I know. anyway forget about us we have an amazing guest with us today which i'm so excited for you guys to speak Yay. to beautiful danielle hughes hello welcome oh, to the thank show. you so much hi you too so good to see you guys again. I haven't seen you two since July. I know. I know. It, 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 I don't, there's so much time that has passed. I mean, we keep up with each other on social media mm -hmm. and things of that nature, but it has been a while, but I'm really, really excited to connect with you and talk to yes. you. Get all up in your business and share yes. amazingness with the world. So, Danielle, first of all, I know how fabulous and amazing and all the wonderful things that you are doing, but oh, I want you to share you. with our audience what you're up to and what you do and all that good stuff. Okay, so I am Danielle, like you guys previously said. Um, I'm currently co-founder and COO of Detroit Speaks Incorporated, and that's a rising nonprofit for youth ages 13 to 17 in Metro Detroit to help them with the next step after high school. So whether that's you're going to college, you're going to be an entrepreneur, you're going to a trade, you're going to get a trade because there is a next step. And I think sometimes our young people are kind of like, look, I graduated high school, like that's it, I've made it. And no, there is a next step. And I, my co-founder and I, we didn't kind of have anyone when we were coming up to kind of guide us. Right. Like, okay, this is, this is how you go about scholarships. Maybe school isn't for you. Let's help you get a business plan together and we'll help you with some startup funds. Or maybe you want to, you know, have a trade or whatever that is, but we didn't have anyone to really, we were winging it. So, and as a result, I'm in so much debt. I just checked my debt yesterday and I'm in $130,000 worth Ooh. of Yeah, we can relate. Those student loans are butt oh, kickers. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> And one, one thing, definitely, Danielle, I wanted to acknowledge you for is taking on this project because me, myself, and Tamisha, we have an affinity for the young youth, yes. you know, and uh -huh. I just wanted to acknowledge you for creating that village for these kids because the bottom line is these children don't, they feel that they don't have a voice, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, you know, a lot of them, you know, due to technology, they don't have those tech, uh, those interpersonal people soft skills. And everybody's just looking at their phone and their iPads and all of these mobile devices, and they just feel alone. So I just wanted to yes. acknowledge you for taking that on because we need more of these village-minded individuals in the world today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I went to a school a couple of weeks ago, not to get off subject, and spoke to some students, and um, they were saying like their FAFSA wasn't completed or blah, blah, blah. So I'm asking like, why isn't this done? You know, do you need help with it? They're like, well, I need my mom to sign it, and she hasn't been home. In three mm. So. Yeah. Was, and it, that's a problem because, you know, the parents are, we, we hope that the parents are doing the best that they can, mm -hmm. you know, trying to put food on the table and put, keep mm -hmm. these kids in school and whatever else it is. But the reality is our parents are not home, you know, mm -hmm. even for us growing up, you know, our parents were working. The times were a little bit different where we could stay home by ourselves and they knew that we were taking care of the business because we didn't want to get our behinds kicked. Right. So we didn't play, you know, we fooled around, but we didn't play anything. <laughs> But this generation is so much different and right. it's so easy for them to get wrapped up and involved in things they have no business getting wrapped up and involved in. So they need people like yourself. They need this business. They need, you know, people that care about them and that are pouring into mm -hmm. them and guiding them in the right direction, whatever that is for them. So and, absolutely and, and also we live in an environment now where it, the village is dead and, right. you know, everyone is just focusing on when something happens directly to them versus, you know, someone else, you know, um, that the love thy neighbor mentality is, is mm -hmm. dead. 
And you know, like I said, I I just really love your your, your project and, and what you do, what you're doing in the world because this is what we need. It, it's it's a necessity, and we you know we can't have enough of these type of programs out here. Thank you so much. So I want to talk about you know this whole show is about. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, guys. I'm getting over the flu. But this whole show is about, you know, talking to successful entrepreneurs that have taken the leap into following their dreams and doing something that they love. So one of the things that Danielle didn't get a chance to mention yet was that Danielle actually used to be a news anchor and journalist <laughs> for what? what is it? W? I don't want to screw it up. So tell me what you are. DW is the yes. CBS station. Danielle was on a CBS news station as an anchor and she left that job to start to pursue this business now that she's talking about Detroit Speaks. So I'm really interested into learning into that experience and how that was for you because what I can share with you is that Danielle is a beautiful young lady. And why say that to say that that opportunity that Danielle had to become a journalist and then to become an anchor for such a powerful platform does not come around that often, especially for women of color. Let's just keep it real. And women in their 20s. So for that to happen, and then she leave that experience to then do something on her own, I could only imagine how many, you know, things you had to go through emotionally to really oh step into that space. Still. And, and, <laughs> right. and I, 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 I wanted to touch on a few things. Now, she was on television, you know, making a difference as a news anchor. Mm -hmm. Most people would have said, Danielle, you are crazy for leaving this situation oh You're on television. And I just wanted to point something else out, too. The last time we saw Danielle and we met her for the first time was in July. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I talk about and me, uh, Tamisha talks about is honoring your word. In July, I remember hearing her testimonial and hearing how unhappy she was in a position of power, and, you know, a, a platform where she can express herself, and she still was unfulfilled. And I wanted to acknowledge uh, Danielle on the, on, on the cusp of, on the perspective of her honoring her word. She said she was going to quit, and she did just that. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say the importance of setting milestones and actually going out and doing it. So I, I really appreciate you for honoring your word and, and sticking to what it is you're passionate about. So let's so talk about that for a second. And okay. You know, how, how was that for you? First of all, I want to talk briefly about you even getting into that space okay. of having that position to be an anchor on the news, on television, and being able to you know, share your journalism, share your story with people, okay. and then talk about that part where it kind of shifted for you, where you felt like this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, so I have a very unique story. So I'm going to start from the beginning. Okay. So when I was 16, my um, English teacher at the time, I didn't know what I wanted to be when I got older. So she gave us a report and she said, you know, come back and tell me what you all want to do, what you see yourself doing in the next 10 years, blah, blah, blah. I need this tomorrow. So I'm like, her name was Miss Jackson. I'm like, Miss Jackson, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know. She was like, well, I'll tell you what, this needs to get done. So I don't care what you come up with, but you need to come up with something. So I'm like, okay. And it was a, an extensive report. Like we had to job shadow someone and all this good stuff. So I'm like, let me just call my uncle. My uncle had been a, um, a radio journalist for years for WJR. It's based in Detroit and it's talk radio. So I go to shadow him and I'm like, this is so boring. I'm not doing this. So I'm like, I love you, but this isn't for me. He was like, well, you know I have a friend who works for channel four, which is the NBC affiliate news station based in Detroit. How about you job shadow her? I'll call her. So I'm the, um, her name was Rhonda Walker, and she's like one of the most notable African-American female journalists in Detroit, and even nationwide. So she's a big name in Detroit. So I'm like, this is your friend? Oh, my goodness. I job shadow her. I fall in love with it. I'm like, okay, I want to be in news. So I went to Georgia State to get my undergrad degree, graduate from Georgia State. I had the chance to travel to Istanbul, Turkey, and Budapest, Hungary as a journalist. Um, and I did a documentary there on the um, comparing and contrasting higher education in the U.S. and Eastern Europe. So after that, I send out my reels, blah, blah, blah. I graduate. I get a job in Dalton, Alabama. Never heard of Dalton, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Middle of nowhere. Go to Dalton, Alabama. I become a reporter for an ABC station. Awesome. I'm um, 22 when I got the job. Moving down there by myself. Great. You know, I was making $22,000. 
um, as a journalist. And I think that's something that people don't understand. They would always ask, like, you were making so much money, though. What happened? And I'm mm-hmm. like, I really wasn't, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's just keep it real. I wasn't. Right. Um, so I got into a fender bender and station car because what I think a lot of people also don't understand about news is as a multimedia journalist, you don't have a photographer. So I was doing everything. I was driving myself to the stories. I was shooting the stories. I was writing the stories and coming back and editing them and then um, doing them on air. Wow. So that was a lot in a day. So a lot of times you're in the car, you're multitasking because you're crunching for time and deadlines as a journalist. That's just, there's never enough time in the day because there's breaking news and then you have to totally scrap what you've been working on all day and you want something else. So I get into a fender bender and I was in the station car and I tap the lady's car in front of me. So long story short, she has no damage to her car. I have very minimal damage to my station car, but I had never been in an accident before. So I really didn't know how to handle it. So I'm afraid. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my job. What do I do? She's like, you know what? Let's not even take this to the police uh, station because I don't have any insurance. Her boyfriend was driving. He didn't have a license. She was like, we don't want to get you in trouble. So I'm like, okay, cool. Like, right. that's what we're going to do. Anyway, that wasn't the way to go about it. Um, I ended up getting the police report, but it was days later. And my boss, this happened on a Tuesday. My boss called me into his office on a Friday and said, we got to let you go because you're not on the station's insurance and we could lose all of our station vehicles because of you. And it's just not worth it. So we have to let you go. Mm. So they reported me out with all of my stuff in a box. <laughs> oh, no. Like the movies, like on TV. And that was it. And I'm like, wow, I'm down here in the middle of nowhere. Like, God, what is happening? I don't get it. I thought I was doing so well. And my whole world is just shaking up. I probably had like a thousand dollars in savings. So I'm like, what do I do? So whenever I do speaking engagements or speak to people, I always stress the importance of mentors. Mm -hmm. My mentor is literally the reason that I transitioned into my anchor position so quickly. I got that job within a week and a half of losing my job as a reporter. Um, I called my mentor and I'm freaking out. She's like, chill come to Atlanta. We're going to figure it out. I go to her station. She's like, I'm going to call my old news director. She's looking for some reporters. I'm like, look, I don't care what it is. I just need some money. I don't care what you have me doing. I'll take it, whatever. So she sends my information to her boss. Her boss calls me within the next week. And she's like, yeah, I want to offer you the reporter position. I'm like, but you don't even know me. You haven't interviewed me or anything. She's like, no, I'm going to offer you the position. Your mentor talked you up. She's, you know, I trust Blaine's word. You're going to be fine. I'm like, okay. She said, but I have something else in mind for you. I was like, well, what's that? She was like, I have a morning anchor position available. And I said, well, I've never anchored before. I was like, you do understand I've only been out of college. It was coming up on a year. I said, so I don't, I don't know. She's like, well, let's just try it. She was like, I see a lot of potential in you. If it doesn't work out, it just doesn't work out. So I said, okay, let's do it. And I ended up becoming an anchor. Wow, <laughs> and it was- what an amazing story. So I ended up moving. I got let go from my job January 5th. I moved to Augusta to start my new position July 4th, the weekend of July 4th. Wow. Well, one of, one of the things that um, I want the listeners to understand mm-hmm. that when you lost your job, you, you know, you probably felt horrible about it. <laughs> and, you, you know, you had a thousand dollars in your name, you know, to your name. But you didn't, it sounded like you didn't make yourself wrong about it. You just moved on to the next opportunity. Yep. And, you know, for the, and the, you know, for everyone listening, you know, stop making yourself wrong when things don't happen your way. Just find another way to knock down that door to get where you need to be. Right. And also, a lot of times people look too, you know, you, you do have to do things with the end in mind, mm-hmm. but it's very important to know what's next for you. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, what you, what you were saying, you know, what was next for you, you were willing to do what it took to get you to that level. Mm-hmm. You know, I so, you know, we got to, you know. Mm-hmm. And not even knowing what, at that particular point, she was just trying to find an opportunity mm-hmm. and the opportunity came up that you were afraid of, but mm-hmm. you still allowed yourself to step into that space right. and say, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but we're going to go with it. And yep. you know, another thing that was really uh, touching, what you said too, was the mm-hmm. fact that this lady didn't know who you was, but you were able to leverage your mentor's relationship mm-hmm. with her. Mm-hmm. You have to learn how to leverage relationships. Yeah. Everything is pretty much related to relationships. Yeah. And also, she, after her speaking to you, she saw something in you that you knew was there that you were second guessing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for the listeners, people, listen to what people are telling you. Yeah. They're telling you what you're, what you're great at. Stop yeah. fighting it. 
Stop okay. pushing it to the side. Start in, start embracing how your greatness and start doing it. Yep, exactly. Exactly. You just have to do it because when you take that leap, it, you just have to jump. You just have to do it and just exactly. trust the process that it's all going to work out. So we end up, um, I'll tell her like, I don't know, I've never anchored before, blah, blah, blah. She's like, whatever, let's just come interview, blah, blah, blah. We're going to work it out. So my co-anchor was 16 years my senior. She had been in the business. Oh my goodness, going on like 13 years, I think. Wow. And she's like, yeah, she's an, she's won numerous Emmy awards. She's a very decorated journalist telling me all this stuff. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm coming in straight out of college. I'm super nervous. So I come in and I read with her and we shared the desk and we did some mock um, newscasts. And once I left, I stumbled and I stuttered and I was just so nervous. I sent her an email saying, I hope that you will still consider me for this position because I really want it. But I just knew I'm like, I bombed that whole newscast. It was horrible. So Mm -hmm. whatever. So I didn't hear from her. I hear from her. Um, maybe a week and a half later and she emails me and she says, Hey, um, I want to offer you the position. And I also want to offer you like a $30,000 increase in what you were making before. Woohoo! Yes. I'll take it. <laughs> yes, I'll take it. My son. <laughs> <laughs> so what, and I will always say, you know, it ended up not working out for me staying at the station, obviously, but I have nothing bad to say about my boss at, she was awesome and she gave me so many opportunities um also coming in i told her like what if this doesn't work out what if i start anchoring and i'm like i hate it i want to report again they gave me a so usually in a news contract it's usually two to four years so starting out you'll get a two-year contract and you basically need to die if you want to get out of that contract mm-hmm. like they're very strict <laughs> contracts <laughs> if you're not dead that's i don't know how to tell you how you're getting out of it you usually have to pay your way out of it Mm. So, and that can be very expensive. So right. I'm telling her like, what do I do if I don't like it? She's like, I'll give you a one year out. So if in one year, this isn't working out, we're going to decide to go our separate ways or we'll decide to do something else. And I say, great. So one of the, I started out and it was rough. It was so rough. Being on a reporting, you're only on air for maybe a minute, something like, maybe two minutes. Mm-hmm. Now. When you're anchoring, you literally anchor that newscast. You hold that newscast down and you're the main face that everyone sees. So whether that's um, narrating the entire newscast then you're throwing it to reporters and having conversations with them, you're the face of the newscast. And being in the South and being a young woman, and I'm sure people could tell, you know, I, I was obviously not, you know, the same age as my co-anchor. I got so many nasty emails, so many nasty emails, comments on social media, like, get her off. Where did you get her from? Um, She needs a speech therapist. I can't. Oh, no. I don't like the way she dresses. It was just something every single day. My first week there, someone emailed and sent a long message, and I think I still have it. And he just said, you know, she's horrible. I'll never watch your station again. I was a loyal viewer of 50 plus years. And I never want to see this young woman ever again. It was just so bad. Wow. I mean, was it that so, serious for him? Yeah, it's just so, like, I've gotten probably six or seven really bad emails about that. And the other ones will come, like, I don't like her lipstick. Stop moving your arms so much. You're annoying. Stuff like that. Really? We were laughing one time, and someone sent an email, like, is that girl Danielle on crack? Like, what? It was just so bad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But what did your boss have to say about that? I would come to her the first time, like the first few times it happens, I'm crying. Like, I don't like, I don't get it. Almost like, why are you letting these people say this to me? Like turn a filter off. Like, why am I getting all these emails? And she was like, either you're going to prove them wrong or you're going to prove them right. Mm. So either you're going to keep going or maybe this isn't the place for you because this is how the real world works. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that's just the real, the real world period. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to, you're going to start a business. You're going to work a job, whatever the case may be. And people are going to judge you Yes. when you do right or wrong. It doesn't matter. There's always going to be judgment there. Mm -hmm. And I want, you know, the listeners to understand that too, that when you come out with a product, when you come out with a service, you know, people are going to have the most horrible things to say. Some people are going to have the most greatest things to say. It's just, it's just like human nature for people to just focus on the bad. And, and, and allow that to dictate what, you know, what, who, they, who they need to be. And that's the wrong way to go about it. 
The mm -hmm. bottom line is you have to be able to stand alone in your greatness, whatever that looks like, regardless of whatever people say. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, you're not going to have, you know, emotions about it. You know, it's hurtful stuff, but right. there are people in the world that are, that they are, they are bred to troll people. Yes. Yeah. The trolls. This, the and, trolls. And that comes from their, their self-limiting doubts or their self-limiting whatever BS that, that, they, that, you know, that they dealt with in their lives. So, you know, I just encourage people, all of the, and, and it comes in the form of family and friends. Yep. You know, you gotta, you gotta push yourself away from the trolls and you have to be able to, to stand and deliver in your greatness, period. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And don't go back and forth with those people, whether it's family, friends, people on the internet, just leave it alone. Just understand that we're just gonna, you know, agree to disagree on this one. And because right. it's not worth the time. I would spend so much time going back and forth with those people. As soon as I get an email, I'm on my keyboard typing away. Like, uh-uh. So let me tell you about me. And let me tell you why. Uh-uh. No. For what? Right. What's the point? Let it go because if you could do it, I would be watching you instead of you watching me. Absolutely. So let's just, I'm just going to let it go. But that really, and now looking back, I just know that that was meant for my life. Like, I needed that because I have such a thick skin now. Mm -hmm. Now, even transitioning into Detroit Speaks, we've gotten horrible criticism from um, op-ed columns or from grants that we've applied to. And they're like, no, you're too young. We don't, you need more structure. You need blah, blah, blah. And we could have let that really hurt our feelings. And you know what? Maybe this isn't for us. But no, I'm like, trust me, been through worse. Mm -hmm. What's your name? So... And I love that. I love that about you because, you know, I have heard part of this story before and then every time I hear it, it's just so motivating because it's so easy to give up or just say, you know, these are the signs that this isn't for me and move on and not step into that space. And there's always a lesson to be learned from every single thing. So just like you just mentioned, you know, that opportunity was an opportunity for a season mm -hmm. and there were valuable jewels and lessons that carved you into being a better woman that you are today yes. from that experience. Exactly. So I actually want to talk about the transition point. So okay. when did things shift for you when you finally said, you know, besides, I, I know you were able to push through all the negative comments and all that negative um, information that was going your way, but something shifted for you as it relates to you now having a new purpose. Mm -hmm. And so what changed or what happened? I went through a state of depression, mm -hmm. like legit depression. Um, I was at a, so we were merging stations and we were short on reporters. So I had reporter experience. So now I'm doubling as anchor and reporter. Wow. So now I'm reporting in the morning because we were short on reporters. And of course, to save money, they're going to, you know, they don't want to outsource. So they're going to stick with the people they have in-house. Mm -hmm. So I'm reporting in the morning and then I'm anchoring my 12 p.m. New yeah, 12 p.m. newscast by myself. So I'm reporting out in the field, rain, sleet or snow, coming back, running in, probably haven't eaten all day. Got to do hair and makeup, change my clothes and get ready to read a newscast. Wow. On the same salary too, right? On the same salary. Okay. Yep, same salary. So I'm doing all of this. I was at a house fire every day. I was at a car accident every single day. I was at a a shooting every single day. Um, I was at the hospital talking to the coroner, what getting me getting all the information on these fatalities. And I literally did not have any emotions anymore. I did not have any feelings. I was in a bad mood all the time. There was a dark cloud covering me. And every single morning when I woke up, I was just kind of like, dang God, like, I didn't even want to wake up this morning. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Why am I even here? I just lost a sense of purpose and I, nothing made me happy. Nothing. Um, I would just stay secluded in my apartment for days. Like if I didn't go to work, I would go to work and come back home and not talk to anyone. And it would just be, and that's so opposite of my personality. Mm -hmm. So I ended up having a conversation with my mom and I told her, Mom, I don't think this is working because this is affecting my mental health. And it had gotten really bad. Mm -hmm. um, I was down there by myself. All of my family is in Detroit. And I had been on my own since I was 19. So that wasn't really the problem. But when you're dealing with something like that in your job, your every day is affecting your mental health that way. And you don't have anyone to go to. Mm -hmm. That's tough. Right. So she's like, well, maybe you need to see a therapist. And I'm like, I'll try it didn't work. It's nothing is working. Maybe I need to make a change. I go to my boss and I'm telling her like, I just don't think this is working out. 
So this had to be in March. And she's like, okay, well, let's give it another month and see how you're feeling. And if not, we'll just decide to, you know, do what we need to do. So I go and I found myself doing, working on programming for Detroit Speaks all day while I was at work. Where there could have been massive breaking news and I'm trying to solidify webinar details for the upcoming Detroit Speaks or I'm working on our programming or whatever that meant. And I'm like, okay, okay, something's got to give. We need to make a change. So I prayed on it, went to her and it was really, I don't under, I don't really know if maybe, um, she kind of took it the wrong way when I came to her, like, I don't want to do this anymore. Like this isn't for me anymore. And she kind of flipped it on me. So our last meeting, I told her like, you know, I think it's time for me to leave. I would like to, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for to, you know, seize my contract, like want to do away with it. Like I'm ready to get it done. And she told me, well, the GM general manager and I have been talking and we think that's a great decision because we're looking to replace you. So I kind of ended up getting forced out. <laughs> yeah. But you know, they say that when that's their way of protecting their, themselves exactly. and their feelings because they don't want to feel like you left them. So now they got to flip exactly. on you. She's Whatever. Like, we're looking for someone with a little more experience anyway, so it works out. So I said, okay. So we just, you know, chalked it up to a mutual decision, even though that was something I was going to do anyway. Mm -hmm. um, they did end up replacing me with a, um, she may be like 46, 47 year old black woman. Sweetest okay. guy, love her. And it just worked out. Mm -hmm. So that was it. I left. So my picture was hanging up on the wall along with all the other journalists and anchors who had been there for years. I, my last day, July 8th, I went to her office, gave her a hug, told her, thank you for everything. My boss cleaned out my desk, took my picture off the wall and walked out. Mm. Nice. And, you know, you know, for, you know, all of the, the listeners that maybe, you know, going through depression or have, you know, suffer from, you know, some kind of mental illness condition, you know, I just wanted to say that, you know, you're not alone mm -hmm. in that feeling and you could, you know, just listening to what Danielle said, even in her state of depression, she was able to discover her why, why, you know, what, you know, or her passion. And she was able to release that. I, I get the impression when you released yourself from that, that, that anchor position, it allowed, it freed, it didn't, it didn't only release you from your job. It released you from that depressive mental state that you were in. For sure. This so, is the happiest that I've ever been. Wow. Ever in life. And so I want to say something to that as well, because a lot of times we, and I think you may have mentioned this, <laughs> excuse me, already, but what I want to communicate to everybody that's listening is that, you know, sometimes we get ourselves into these situations where we're afraid, even though we know in our heart, this is not for me, or this is not the right thing for me to do, because it looks good, because it feels good, because it has, you know, powerful connotations behind it. Oh, I'm an anchor on the news. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you stay stuck in that space, even though you're miserable, even though you're depressed because you don't want to let your family down or you feel like you don't want to let yourself down or you don't know what's next for you. So you stay stuck in this position, being miserable and being upset. And I know that there's a lot of people that's listening to this show right now that are sitting at a desk or, you know, working a nine to five and they're miserable, but they're that, you know, it's paying the bills or they have a family or they have children or they don't want to, you know, they have a, a position of power and they don't want to let the people in their lives down. So they stay stuck there and shelve their passions, you know, someplace else because they don't want to be wrong for letting this position go. And I want to let you know that it's okay if this is not, okay. that's not for you. It's okay. You and and even, even if it's a prominent job, like Tamisha, she worked for the vice president of Coca-Cola. Like people were salivating to be in a position. I'm sorry, the president, excuse me. <laughs> Not vice president, president. Let me get that right, okay? Well, he was and, the EV, and, and that's irrelevant. And, the bottom know, line is. You know, yes. I've worked for numerous Fortune 500 companies and people, you know, saw me in the three-piece suits and just thought that I just lived this life, but I was alone, as well as Tamisha felt alone. Because the bottom line is this. If you are working a job that is affecting your mental health, mm -hmm. if you are working a job that you are unhappy with, that you do not want to get up in the morning, a change has to happen mm -hmm. ASAP. 
You have to figure it out. And that's why at the Quit Your 9 to 5 Academy, what we have been doing is helping individuals use that day job, whether if you hate it or not, as fuel to make your dream happen. Right, yes. And, yeah. and also, you know, it's, it, it's, this is why I want people to understand. If you are not standing alone in your greatness, you are doing a disservice to your mental health. Mm-hmm. You're doing a disservice to the people who are waiting for you. Mm-hmm. So I encourage you to, 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 to take that jump, to take that leap of yeah. faith. Because, you know, you, you know, Danielle said a lot in this interview, there was so many things that was happening to her and she didn't know what the next step was. She just was jumped and took a leap. Mm-hmm. You exactly. have to do that. We got to stop living in people's, we got to stop living in from the perspective of what people want us to do. Mm-hmm. We got to stop doing that because if you can't stand alone in your greatness, your mental health is going to be at stake. Mm-hmm. It's always going to lead to depression. It's always going to lead to, you know, something that's not good that's going to hinder you from being playing a bigger game in the world. In, in, exactly. in, in the world. And you know, you were a news anchor. You, I mean, you were on TV every day. Who, you know, go figure. You would think that you were adding so much value to people's lives. Then you got these trolls. You know, you go into these horrific, you know, reporting events. People dying and. You know, not giving yourself time to detox, mm-hmm. let alone Never. on, on, on a, a chicken nugget budget, no pun intended, yeah. Yeah. you know, and, and you know, it, 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 would have, it would have been different if it was something that you love to do. It wouldn't have been about the money. Right. You know, it was just a stepping stone to release you into your greatness. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And so yeah. sometimes you have to go through a season or a period <laughs> of something that makes you uncomfortable to groom you into something else. When you got this opportunity, you didn't know, it, it sounded great. It, it appeared to be a great opportunity. And for that season, it, it was, but then it, it was to mm-hmm. a point where it no longer serves you. Mm-hmm. And so you have to make that transition into what's next for you. And sometimes okay. you don't know what's next for you, but you also are building relationships with people or are starting other things on the side or, or doing other things where What's next for you will, will come to you. It might not come to you tomorrow. It might not come to you next week. It might not come to you next month. But it will come to you if you're seeking for it. Exactly. Absolutely. And I just wanted to touch on, I remember, like, you know, reiterating when we met Danielle at the Unlock Summit, mm-hmm. I believe it was. Mm-hmm. And I, I just wanted to talk about when you made the decision to leave. Mm-hmm. I, you know, we always tell our listeners and some of, most of our clients to have a day set that they're going to put in their two-week notice. Well, guess what? I not only heard Danielle say it, but we're actually witness to it right now. Exactly. So, you know, let's stop making excuses. And wanna... we followed up with her. We were exactly. like, yeah, hi. We held her accountable. And I want to thank you two so much because you two, like, I was at probably my lowest. Uh-oh. I was probably at my lowest when I met you two. Um, it was a really hard time being at the Unlike Summit. So meeting you two, you two really spoke life into me. Wow. wow. I would have never guessed well, that. It, yeah, I would have ne- I mean, she looked so oh, happy. Yes. And, she looked so happy and powerful. And powerful face. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you're a news anchor. And, and, I, and I remember <laughs> at the end of the event, I, me and Daniel had a conversation because I had to get to him. We had a really great conversation. And, you know, again, it, you know, it just, it, it gives us so much gratitude to know that you know, we 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 at, we aided somehow in your transformation because so that informed us as well. So much. Oh my goodness, you two both kind of like took me under your wing. Like, look, it's gonna be okay. Just make that leap, and it'll work out. And it has worked out. Wow. And awesome. I'm not gonna lie and say that every day has been peaches and cream. Absolutely. But I have such a sense of peace now. It's priceless. Mm-hmm. Yes. So many um of my friends who are who are journalists have come to me, and I went to lunch with one of my friends who's a black woman who just got an anchor position in Kentucky and she said I'm gonna leave my job because I'm not happy and she told me had you not made that leap and said that you weren't happy she's like I would have never done it yeah and we've and we've uh, talked about this in previous um uh quit your nine to five podcast shows mm-hmm. where when Tamisha um quit there was so many people that yes. she didn't even know that never said a, a word to her a day <laughs> in their life that was so Im- impacted on it like they couldn't believe that she took that that jump they probably thought she was crazy and insane to do it and like and even like you said being an entrepreneur is not peaches and cream every day but you know what you have you have your freedom you have your self-expression you are totally responsible and accountable for your life mm-hmm. 
exactly. Being able to not have to put time in PTO to go on a vacation yes. mm-hmm. or because someone in my family is sick and I need to take some time off. No, I control that. Mm-hmm. I control my schedule. If I want to go to lunch with someone at any time of my day, whenever I want to, I can do that. And that's the most, this is priceless. Mm-hmm. You cannot put a price tag on this. And we, you know, no, you sure cannot. And just add into that, you know, we, we get to put our, our oldest son on the school bus. We take the youngest every day to, to, to daycare. We pick them up. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just, you know, like you said, you could just pick and go as you please. That freedom, you could not put a price tag on it at all. Mm-hmm. Especially yeah. and then and then standing alone in your greatness, yeah, it's it's it, it it could appear to be lonely. That's why you have to associate yourself with people who are smarter than you, people who have you know similar or different aspirations to be great and to stand in that greatness every day. You just have to make that shift. You know, we've we've been you know groomed to believe that, and and, and again, there are people who work in nine to fives. Mm-hmm. I am not demonizing nine to fives because some people oh, built. Enough. And, and they are living in their dream. So I, I want to leave you guys with your dignity too. But, you know, but we about quitting your nine to five and, you know, living, you know, standing alone, standing alone in your greatness and playing a bigger a game in life, period. Exactly. And I hope that I don't offend anyone by saying this, but some people are just really good employees. Mm-hmm. They yeah. just really mm-hmm. are. My mm-hmm. mom and I had a conversation the other day. She's a really good employee. She's very loyal to her employers. That was never me. Yeah. <laughs> I was, my first job was a dairy queen and I quit like look I'm not getting paid enough like I gotta go so. and I can remember and, and now now you know my memory serves me correctly I remember we you know that was one of the questions about what are some of the fears that you had about leaving that news anchor job and I remember speaking to you directly and I think me and Tamisha were talking to you at the time and your, your mom I believe it was thought you were crazy yes. and it makes sense now what you're saying because you, you're hearing her opinion from an, an employee-based mindset yes. versus yes. someone. And, and, you know, again, that, that type of mindset has been translated into generations and generations and yes. generations. And it's not her fault. That's right. just how we were raised. Right. You know, especially yeah. as, you know, African-American people, um, you know, you get, your goal is to get a good job so that you can sustain your life. So once you get that, Regardless of what you have to deal with, I'm sure your mom was very proud to say her daughter is an anchor on the news. You know, mm-hmm. I know my parents were very proud to say, oh, my daughter works for, you know, the executives at the Coca-Cola company. That's mm-hmm. exciting for them. And of course, they want to see us succeed and they want to mm-hmm. see us do well. So when you say opposite that you want to do something different, like for me, it took, what, six months before I actually told my parents that mm-hmm. I quit my job. Mm-hmm. They thought I was working for home from home for the last six months. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm working from home. I was. I just wasn't working for Coke. But, you know, eventually I'm like, okay, I'm a grown woman married with kids. Why am I lying to these people? I need to let them know what's really bad so that I can have a clear conscience and live in my purpose because that was holding me back too. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk for a second about, you mentioned earlier that you were working on Detroit Speaks while you were still doing news anchoring and reporting. So what were some of the first things that you did in that business? Was that business always like a passion project for you or did it start off as a passion product product project and what were some of the first things that you did to really kick that business off so it was definitely a passion project from the start we never looked to make money off of it so there were three co-founders at first um myself and two of my friends from high school we talked one day and we're like yeah we should have a conference for kids in the city you know to match them with mentors So then that conference ended up turning into an organization. So now we're having webinars and we're having um, volunteer impact days in Detroit. And we have tutors going into schools, but we never thought about, and everything was volunteer based because I was in Georgia. My other co-founder was in Georgia and our other co-founder was in St. Louis. So all of our careers are taken us different places. So everything is volunteer based. So even if we wanted to kind of kick things into gear, we couldn't because there was nothing physically there. And you can only ask so much of volunteers. It's like, because this is our baby. So um, we were starting to do that. We're like, so the whole time that I was working, it was just, everything was volunteer based. So there was, we were making no money besides donations that we were getting. And that was going straight into the business. So we were not, we weren't paying ourselves. So when I got, um, not to go off subject or anything, when I first got home, I had more time to, and first of all, I applied for like, 40 or 50 positions in Atlanta before 
I decided to move back home. Mm-hmm. Didn't hear back to me. So I'm like, okay, I guess I'm in Detroit for a few months. So a few months turned into six months. And then <laughs> six months turned into longer. And Detroit speaks just really the strings that God pulled once I said, I'm going to get serious about pouring into these kids and taking this organization seriously was amazing. Um, first, we had to file for nonprofit, our 501c3. So that's how we now get paid and pay ourselves through grants. So at first we were never making any money off this. This was just because we really feel for these kids and mm-hmm. we're giving back in the areas that we live in, but not to the city that made us. So that's what it was. Um, and now we have, we've reached over 60 or 70 students within the past six months um, mm-hmm. with our programming and with funding. And we have so much in store. We're revamping everything at the moment. Our website, if anyone wants to check it out, is DetroitSpeaksOut.com. And we have our landing page up because we are renovating everything, literally. Um, What kind of, when I knew that I was on the right track, because when I first got home, things were rocky, of course. My, I wasn't getting paid as much as I was in news, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, And my pay was fluctuating. So it was like, depending on how much this grant is, this is how much money I'm getting. And if it's not that much, I'm not getting that much. And I still had bills that needed to be paid. So I got a email from Forbes in towards the end of September. So I open it and I have a subscription to Forbes. I'm like, oh, they're probably telling me my subscription. My subscription. <laughs> I need to renew something. So I check it. Like it says, congratulations, you're a nominee for Forbes 30 into 30. I said, what? Me? So I keep reading and it says for your work with Detroit Speaks Incorporated. Mm. And I just looked up to the sky like, okay, God okay, we're, I'm going to keep going with this because obviously this is where you want me to be. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty much, I hope I didn't get too off subject. No, no, no that's exactly you, where I want right you to point. go because, you know, it doesn't, you know, hearing your story, it's the reality. It's the real, you know, everybody doesn't come on here. I don't think anybody has ever come on this show and be like, yeah, I quit my job. And then a week later I was making six figures and I've been killing it ever since. No, that's not the reality. But if you put in the work, it's going to come back to you twofold, threefold, fourfold. So, you know, you were nominated 30 under 30 for Mm -hmm. Forbes magazine. Mm -hmm. You are currently now a contributor for Black Enterprise magazine. You have Detroit Speaks. I mean, you're doing a lot of powerful and amazing things and you're making an impact in the world. And that's not, you know, something that comes easy and that's not something that you could even put a price tag on and also going from the news anchor to getting trolled to you know doing something you didn't like to do to ending up you know you know looking for a job jobs going back home creating Detroit speaks what I want the listeners to start making the distinction on, on life life people have the distinction that life is happening to them but life is actually happening for you mm-hmm. because if you didn't do what you did, first of all, you'll still be a news anchor in a depressive state. God knows, you know, how that would look like. Okay. We don't even want to talk about that. that. that would you got to start looking at life is happening for you to mm-hmm. take you on a, on a journey to that destination. Mm-hmm. The universe already has everything set out for you. The problem is it takes some people to get to their destination longer because they stop embracing what's happening for them and they become, see, it's a difference. When you, when life is happening to you, you are a victim. Yes. Life is happening for you. You are starting to move into your greatness, even if you don't know it or not. Exactly. You know, I just wanted to make that distinction. Start looking at life as it is, is happening for you, not to you. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly how you have to look at it. And even (laughs) now, just, I found, I find joy in small things now waking up and not having to put on any makeup and just yes not have I can wear braids if I want to or I can wear my natural hair or I can wear sweats for three days and <laughs> it won't make a difference mm-hmm. to anyone mm-hmm. and also just being out of the spotlight so I always compared one of my favorite movies is the players club I don't know if you all have ever seen yes that. of course <laughs> I love that movie. Don't, don't let the money make you. I forgot to say, I about you probably gonna say that, right? Make the money, don't let the money make you. Uh-huh. So another thing, just being out of the spotlight, because there was a scene in that movie and Diamond, who was, you know, Lisa Ray's character, mm-hmm. one of the guys that, you know, would always come see her at the club followed her home one day. And he like tried to break into her house and he was like, But Diamond, I spent so much time with you. Like, let me in, let me in. I got followed home one day from Home Depot. 
from a guy who told me, and I thank God, because I really wasn't paying attention that he was following me, but I stopped at my leasing center and got up, out like, hey, you know, like, let me just see where he's going. And he got up and said, hey, he got out of his car. He said, I don't mean any harm or malice, but I watch you every morning. And I, I feel like we're friends. Like, I know you. And I just want to talk to you. Like, can I get a picture? Like, I hope you don't think this is creepy. I was like, well, yeah, it is because you just followed me home. Right. <laughs> and I saw your Michigan plates. And I remember when you first got on the news, you mentioned you were from Detroit, Michigan. So I, I knew it was you. So I, so it just feels what? good not to, yes, I would get I, letters. I from like that story, but those are the kind of things that you have those to do kind of, mm -hmm. And, and, you know, just imagine all this stuff. I'm not happy and I'm already having thoughts of like, if I don't wake up tomorrow, I don't have to deal with any of this. And then I'm getting, I was getting letters from jail, just from people professing their love and people would follow me around in the mall. That, that would, every time I went to the mall, I would have to call my mom or I'll have to call someone just to be like, look, I'm in the mall. Cause there were people who follow me, just grab me, all types of stuff. So it feels really? so good to go somewhere and no one knows who you are. <laughs> well, I mean, Hey, listen, and, and that's oh, something goodness. for the, for the individuals who are looking at vanity and fame, not to say yes. anything is wrong with that. That's the life I'm that you, that's it. the life you have to live. I had to be escorted into work and out of work for three months after that happened because they did a background check on the person and you know, he had, they found out he had some mental illness and blah, blah, blah. And um, our assignment editor, she was so sweet. And she came to me crying one day, like I worked with an anchor and I can't remember what market she said it was. And the woman disappeared and they still have not found her. What? Wow. So this is serious. She was like, it's not, this is nothing to play with. So they got me escorts and I was escorted to my car and escorted into the building. Wow. Wow. Ah, oh, terrible. Well, we're definitely glad you're not doing this anymore. <laughs> we need to go around and share your greatness. So, Danielle, share with us if you can think of, you know, one thing that you feel is most important for people listening to this podcast to know if they're in a position where they feel stuck, they're depressed, they're working a job they hate, they want to step into their greatness. Maybe they know, <coughs> excuse me, what they want to do, or maybe they don't. But what advice would you give somebody that's in that transitional period and, and wanting to take that next step? You have to take the leap. Because once you jump off of that cliff, you're going to, you know, you see a baby bird fly for the first time and they're like flapping. And I actually heard T.D. Jake say this not too long ago. They're flapping and they're like, okay, I'm going down, I'm going down. What am I doing? And then they start to soar because you realize there was something inside of you that you didn't even know was there. Mm -hmm. And as long as you make it, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in the universe, whatever you believe in, everything is going to conspire to help you. Every, you're going to be okay. Everything that you put out into the universe, those good vibes, those affirmations, whenever you feel, whenever you make that bold choice to look, I'm living for me. This is what I'm doing. The world is going to come and have your back. And people are going to come out the woodworks to help you either financially or emotionally or physically, whatever it is, you're going to be okay. You are going to be okay. And you cannot put a price on your happiness. I'm not making as much as I was making. I have no doubt in the next couple of years, Detroit Speaks will blow. I'm claiming that right now. Like I think that we'll be able to impact so many other, so many students in the city. But right now I'm not, and this is the happiest I've ever been. Mm -hmm. hey, and when Danielle says she's going to do something, she honors her word. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm, I'm more than 100% or 1,000% confident, confident that you're going to get this. I'm so. excited to see mm -hmm. the greatness and the, all the possibilities that you're going to create for Detroit Speaks and all the other projects that you're working on. I know it's going to be amazing. And <clears throat> once you have that mindset, the sky is the limit, really, mm -hmm. you know, we can't beat ourselves up or make ourselves wrong. I mean, things make you feel uncomfortable, but you have to be uncomfortable if you want to grow. You can't mm -hmm. do the same things and expect different results. It's exactly. just it's just not possible. Exactly. So you've got to step into that space. You know, we want you to plan, but sometimes you don't have time to plan. Sometimes you got to make a quick decision if it challenges your mental health, your physical health. You know, you, you've got to realize what's most important and prioritize those things so that you can live a happy and full life. And also, you know, when, you, when, when you're an entrepreneur versus being an employee, you know, being an employee creates a lot of complacency because you know you're going to get that check the 15th and the 30th or, you know, whenever you get paid. 
But when you become an entrepreneur, the key to being successful is knowing that you're going to have bad days. You're going to have days that you just be like, but when you're, when you're, when you're um, attached to your greatness and what your passion is, those bad days don't seem that bad because, you know, and then another thing you have, as an, as an entrepreneur, the most successful entrepreneurs are intentional. Mm-hmm. They are, they always take radical action. Mm-hmm. They're ready to deal with whatever life does, you know, whatever, ha- whatever life does for them. Mm-hmm. So exactly. they embrace these moments. And I'm going to tell you right now, you know, when I, when, when I quit in 2008, mm-hmm. you know, it was, it was horrible for me. I was mm-hmm. at times it was just, you know, I, I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. Yep. And, you know, um, with, with the support of Tamisha, it was just amazing. I mean, we had, we had more good days than bad days. I can say that. Awesome. But we had our freedom, you know, you know, just little things, you know, I was able to be there every step of the way through the pregnancies with the kids, you know, doctor's appointments. Like these things are priceless. These are the little things that people don't, yeah, you like can't, you can't put a price tag things. on, you yeah, know, you cannot. and yeah. you're going to have to sacrifice. And I want the viewers to understand yes. that too. The sacrifices come with it. Like it comes with you making that jump to sac- because right now I'm living at my mom's. I've been mm-hmm. on my own since I was 19, had my own apartment, everything since I was 19. And now I just turned 25 and I'm sleeping in my bedroom from high school. Like, and, it's some, and that's okay though. But some right. people don't want to accept yeah. that because they feel like, oh, I'm taking a step backwards because now I got to live with my moms or now, you know, whatever it is that you have to do, you know, and that's part of that whole being uncomfortable. People are not willing to be uncomfortable. And I just wanted to put a little plug from my book, uh, I Am The Possibility, 10 Ways to Design the Life You Want to Live. Now, check this out. When you first went to your mom and told her you wanted to quit that news anchor job, she thought you was nuts. Yes. She probably was talking bad about you to herself. Yes. You know, but she didn't want her baby to know about that. (laughs) But you did something really powerful. Even even with moving in with your mom and taking that sacrifice, that's powerful in itself. Yeah. Right? But you were able to change the listening for your mother. Mm Mm-hmm. Because she's she's standing by you probably even more, and she's more proud of you than you than than she was when you was that news anchor. Mm-hmm. So we have the ability. Things that happen to us in the world, believe it or not, we cause that, mm-hmm. and we have the ability to change the cause of the change that we want to cause in the world. And you are doing that. And I just wanted mm-hmm. to definitely bring that to the for- forefront and let the listeners know that it's us. We are the we are the catalyst to our change. We are. We are, you have to be the change that you want to see. Yes. It all starts with you, like you said, so. So, nice. Danielle, tell us, we're to wrap up the interview, I okay. want to get up in your business. We got to, we ask everybody these two questions. So, the first question is an easy question. What book are you reading now, or what's one of your favorite books that you can share with the audience? Okay, my, now, well, I'm reading the Bible. I'm working my way through the entire Holy Bible, so nice. I love the Bible, um so many different stories and interpretations so i love that my favorite book of all time is the 48 laws of power nice robert nice. green by robert green robert green, robert green. my Excellent. favorite book but what i'm reading now is the man who untapped the secrets of the universe nice mm. nice reading okay so now question number two the last question okay. is tell us something that we or the audience would be surprised to know about you okay and it can be anything Yes, it could be anything. Okay, I'm afraid of Barbie dolls. What? I've never had a Barbie doll. If you could not pay me, if you told me you were going to pay me $1,000 to go down like the Barbie aisle at like a Toys R Us or something, I wouldn't take it. Wow. <laughs> I've never had one. Wow. I've and I was never... told my mom, I just hope I have boys because my little girls yeah, can't have Barbie dolls. Too. Wow. In the history of the Quitchin 9 to 5 wow, podcast, that's a, that's a classic there movie. is a instant classic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i have my god sister was a big barbie doll collector and we spent so much time together and they knew when i came over they had to put them up and put them in a closet <laughs> wonder what they want i'm quite sure there's a phobia name for that i'm sure there is yeah i'm sure there is but yeah it's, now, I, don't I don't like the dolls that you know how those dolls back in the day those they had the big face and the eyes would go up i can't i can't do that the Barbie dolls? I don't. That's okay. Yeah, I'm not I don't judging know. you. No, no, I'm not judging you. Trust me. We got some crazy ones for ourselves. My biggest one is I'm afraid of fish. Like I love to eat them, but I can't look at them. I can't. Oh my god! Try, take, try taking her down the aisle with a with a goldfish. Yeah. Off. 
No, Try I to refuse. Do that. I refuse. Or in, in the fish market, you know, like the, oh the farmer's God. market. I'm itching right oh, now, like, getting goosebumps. And see, and, and, I will halt my, like, in Walmart, the cat litter, because we have we have pets. So the cat litter and the food, the, the dog food and all that stuff is always right next to the aisle where the fish are. That's where I stop. That's it. I don't go. And our son is like, Mommy, come on. You've got to get over your fear. And, and, and I have phobias. Nope. I have a phobia we'll for it. rats. Wow. Rats. That's a little bit different, though. Yeah. Like, who loves rats? Who loves Some people do. Show me those rats. <laughs> Nobody. Right. I mean, if somebody loves rats, there's a. I think there's a bigger problem. And and that and that metal hitting your teeth. Woo! Don't do that around me, please. Metal hitting your teeth. You no, know, when people to rats. You know what? No, what are you talking about. Yeah, I don't people understand. have a a, a fork, <laughs> a metal fork. Oh, oh okay. okay. Like this one oh. here. She bites her spoon. I'm like, what is she doing? He doesn't know what he's talking about. Him and my sister have to watch me while I eat my food. They hate the way I I bite down on the fork. That's Stupid. ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right. Well, anyway. Thank you, Danielle, so, so much for saying Thank you. And I just want to thank you, too, again, because you all, like, definitely played such a major role in me shaping to be who I am. Crush the competition. That is oh. great. Cool. Thank yes. you so, so much. much. I love I to really hear appreciate that. It. And I'm, I'm so excited for you. I'm so happy for you. And, you know, we're definitely going to keep in contact. And hey, definitely, anyway we can get involved to help you with Detroit Speaks, please let us know. Yes, yes. And definitely we... We'll definitely have to get you down to the bombshell experience oh, for as sure. well. Yes. To, to share your story and for that. Sure. Absolutely. Danielle, tell the people where they can find you online. I know you mentioned your website again, so just tell us once more and, and your social media stuff. I yes, our comment. website is DetroitSpeaksOut.com. Um, my personal website is actually going through a revamp as well, so that will launch or relaunch, should I say, uh, in this summer, and that'll be DanielleDHughes.com. But in the meantime, you can find me on Facebook at Danielle D. Hughes. The D is like my staple. So you can find me anywhere with that. You just got to say the D. Uh, and no creeps, no weirdos, and no, no trolls. Troll. No letters from jail, please. Oh, no letters from jail, none of that. <laughs> um, and you can find me. Stop it. Better leave that girl alone. <laughs> you can find me also. You're from Detroit, too. You better watch out. I'm from Detroit. All right. Don't mess with us. Don't mess with us. And you're on Instagram too. Is it da is Daniel D Hughes on Instagram, yes. right? Daniel D Hughes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll make sure we put all that up in the show notes so people can follow. Thank you so much. Thank you, Danielle. We loved having you on our yes. show. Yes. We'll definitely with you have too. you back. If there's things that you want to share about your, what you're doing with Detroit Speaks, just let us know. We would love to have you back on the show. Oh, thank you so much. Are you ready to take your brand to the next level? For more information, show notes, downloads, and free resources, head to www.damianandtamisha.com where you can find out more about this week's episode and the power couple behind it all.